Hi students, good morning to all. Today, which topic is going to discuss about in the chapter is commonly called as Principles of Ecology. That is comes from the chapter 6th. You know that the early classes, what are the definitions of ecology? Ecology is nothing but study of surroundings. In the chapter, in the time which topic is going to be classified is commonly called as ecological factors. are also known as environmental factors. So in this environment, many organisms are exist. That all organism is going to be coexist because all living organism it is dependent to one another. Without depending, no one organism never should possible survival in the environment. So that's what to say. Many organisms that are exist in the environment, but all organisms are coexist. In addition, the environment which contain many components. What are the components of that? The components it may be physical. The components it may be chemical. The components it may be biological. So physical compound, chemical compound, biological compound, that's are occur in the environment. That compound which is intact with living organism. Which component it must be intact with the living organism? That are commonly said to be factors. There are several factors to be influenced in the living organism or interaction of living organism. Those whole factor is commonly called as ecological factor or also called environmental factors. That ecological factor or environmental factor, it is based on the functionality. It is classified as two types. Namely, aerobiotic factors. and biotic factors. What is the given explanation about a biotic factor? So A is denoted is absent. So a biotic factor is also called non-living factor. Biotic factor is also known as living factor. So those factor which makes environments or otherwise known as those factor which makes environments of living organism as well as these environmental factor is meaningful is divided into four classes. What are the four classes that must be existed? What are the call? Climatic factor. Seven thing adaptive factors.
bad thing topographic factors fourth one biotic factors so those four are commonly called as the ecological factor or environmental factor which are meaningfully divided into four classes is namely called as climatic factor adaptive factors topographic factor and the biotic factor can i go to the first one is commonly called as climatic factor climatic factor one of the important living factors to the same climatic factor one of the important living factor that factor regulates the plant's life so for here what are factor it must be influence about the climatic factor is namely called as one is light second thing temperature third thing water fourth one wind fifth one fire so those are all commonly called as climatic factors which include light temperature water wind and fire fire for the climatic factor the first factor is like you know that's now i'm going to be classified as so light one of the important climatic factor that's a regulate so many kinds of physiological process so with the help of light the light it must be regulate so many kinds of physiological process what are the process will be going to be regulate or promote is commonly called as photosynthesis then the transpiration third one germination of seeds fourth one flower so those process without light there is no possibility it must be activated what the first process photosynthesis photo is a light synthesis food so the food is prepared in the presence of light that is a called photosynthesis so light is a must the transpiration you know what the important physiological process if it is not the if it is not accompanied with the plants the plant cannot survive on the earth so what is the definition of transpiration loss of water in the form of water vapor so based on the vaporization they can be classified as three types you know that that's our study to be earlier in physiological classes you know that germination of seeds and also called flower for here you know that light so light one of the important factor for the eye view which wavelength is evolved or which wavelength is observed that your light is commonly called as visible light so in the spectrum so many kinds of wavelength of light is there which wavelength of the light you have to be visible in your eye that light is considered as commonly called as visible light what is the wavelength do you know 400 nanometer to 700 nanometer so 400 nanometer is commonly called as it's a violet as well as 
seven hundred nanometers commonly called as it is a red dwarf. For here, the wavelength, which wavelength it may be possess high rate of photosynthesis. The high rate of photosynthesis. That are occur the wavelength of 400 nanometer to 500 nanometer. That wavelength they may possess high rate of photosynthesis as well as 600 nanometer to 700 nanometer. Those wavelength that must be occur high rate of photosynthesis. In the mean wheel, 500 nanometer to 600 nanometer that time or that wavelength they may be possess low rate of photosynthesis. So here 500 nanometer it can absorb the spectrum is commonly called as blue. 600 nanometer that can be absorbed over this commonly called as red. 700 nanometer absorbed the spectrum is commonly called as green. So for here, which is that essentially treat you want to learn is commonly called as high rate of photosynthesis what level and the low rate of photosynthesis what level. That's only you must be need to be here. For here. The rate of photosynthesis it is our accompany based on the presence of light because the light is not always constant. If it is occur cloudy weather means the rate of photosynthesis it will decrease. If the temperature level it may be present much exceed then that times also photosynthesis will be reduced. So the photosynthesis it must be operated then may be required optimum light is essential. Okay. The next one going to be discussed about. Effects of light. The effect of lights on the plants. So, in the presence of light, what are the process it will be accompanied with plants? First of all, photosynthesis. Second thing, opening and the closing of stomata. Third thing, movements. Fourth thing, runner formation. Fifth thing, flowering. Sixth thing, tuber formation. Seventh thing, stem and root formation. So without light, no things it must be occupied. Photosynthesis, opening and closing of stomata, movements, runner formation, flowering, tuber formation, stem and root formations. So now I am going to base on that intensity of light or base on the concentration of light, the plant can be classified as a two types. One is called Halophytes. The celery is covered in the sea of fives. So, which basis to be classified? Based on the intensity of lights, the plants can be classified as two types halophytes and the sea of fives. What do you mean commonly called as halophytes? It is commonly called as light loving plants.
So on the earth, so many kinds of tertiary plants are there. Thus whole plants, it must be neem, light. Those are all commonly called as halophytes. That's how to call light living plants. So what the example is commonly called as angiosperms. So what they call seophytes, that is commonly called as shared loving plants. So some of the plants, it can survival on the life, no need to light, which are there in shared. What are the examples it must be given to seophytes commonly called as bryophytes. And the turn of it. These are things, these are the first climatic factors of a light. Coming to the second fact is commonly called as temperature. Like light, temperature also one of the important factors. But that factor, it is affect in all metabolic activities. So what you say? Like light, temperature is also an important climatic factor. But what is the main rate is commonly called as it is affect all metabolic activities of the plants or all metabolic activities of cell. But here. In plants, so many kinds of physical process are going on. But all physical process, it must be procured optimum temperature. So during optimum temperature, the rate of metabolic rate is so high. So based on the nature, the temperature can be classified as three limits. What are three limits? First one, minimum temperature. Second thing, optimum temperature. Third one, maximum temperature. So there are three limits based on the presence of temperature. Is there a memory called as? Minimum temperature, optimum temperature, maximum temperature. Okay. During that minimum temperature, that physiological activities it's very lowest. What is that? During minimum temperature, the physiological activities it is lowest. What happened to the optimum temperature? During optimum temperature, physiological activities it is so high. What happened to the maximum temperature? During maximum temperature, the physiological activities will stop. So you know, from that what you have to learn is commonly called as, I am already indicating to you, temperature it is one of the important factor but that must be affect all metabolic activities. But a number of physical processes will be going on but any process it must be required optimum temperature. The optimum temperature only they can be produced or they can be activate high amount of physiological activities. For next I am going like this. So based on the presence of the temperature in your area or uh, because there are different kinds of localities that can available on all over the world. So based on the presence of the temperature in your area, the ranger scientists, the vegetation can be classified as a four types. Who are classified? Ranger. So, Rangia, 
the world vegetation can be classified as four types namely megatherms mesotherms microtherms fourth one hagistotherms so term is a heat with the help of temperature so range here the world vegetation can be classified as the four types is namely called as megatherm what do you mean commonly called as megatherm the plants are grow in very high temperature in all the situation or it may be in all over the world those are commonly called as megatherm what are the examples commonly called as tropical rainforest Seventh thing, what are called mesotherm? The plants are growing in high temperature. What are the example is commonly called as tropical deciduous forest. What are microtherm? The plants are living or growing in low temperature. What are the example is commonly called as needle like plant forest what are the call hexatherm is commonly called as the plants are growing very low what are the example commonly called as alpine forest so the range classified four kinds of Terms, mega, meso, micro, and hexatherms. In addition, thermal springs and deep sea also they can be possess the high range of temperature that range is commonly called as hundred degree Celsius. Which one? Thermal spring. And the deep sea, they will be possess the range of temperatures commonly called as hundred degree Celsius. So, based on the thermal tolerance, the plant can be classified as two types. Which basis? Based on thermal tolerance. The plant can be classified as a two. What is the call? Eurythermal. Second one, stenothermal. So, based on thermal tolerance, the plant can be classified as two types: eurythermal and stenothermal. So, what do you mean commonly called as eurythermal? That means commonly called as the organism which can be adopted wide range of temperature fluctuation what do you say the organism which may be adopt wide range of temperature fluctuation the fluctuation it may be increasing or decreasing so much increasing or much decreasing that the plant or the organism that must be adopted that is commonly called urethermal. So, what the example is given is commonly called as zoostra. So, zoostra is commonly called as marina geosperm. What are called stenothermal? Some of the organism it may be adopted low range of temperature fluctuation. That is commonly called as stenothermal. So, what are the example is commonly called as mango and the plums or palms. So, for here, mango plants 
which is are generally commonly called as growing in temperate countries. So what are the temperate countries is, is not possible to grow is commonly called as Germany and Canada. So Germany and Canada is commonly called as it is a temperate countries. Those areas, the mangoes do not will be grow. Correct. What the next one is commonly called as thermal stratifications. So what is the meaning of stratification? Stratification is nothing but arrangement of stiffness or arrangements of layer. So here thermal stratification it is are generally occur in aquatic. So what are the definitions of thermal stratification? That means commonly called as changes in the temperature profile in the water bodies. Uh, that is known as temperature fluctuation that are occur in the water bodies. That is commonly called as thermal stratifications. The thermal stratification can be classified as three types, namely epilimination. Epilimnion. Megalinion Epilimnion, Megalinion and Hypolimnion So what are the call Epilimnion? These are bonds So this is that epilimnion. So epilimnion that must be considered as upper surface of water table. So that is epilimnion. Here the water is always warm because of that of a surface. Megalimnion means commonly called as it is occur at middle. Here temperature fluctuations are occur. Or here temperature will be gradually decreased where at the middle. What I call hypolimnion is commonly called as temperature cannot be penetrated in this area. It is a commonly called as hypolimnia. Here usually they can be occur in cold water. So this is a commonly called as thermal stratification. What they call? Changes of temperature that must be occur in the water profile or water bodies is commonly called as thermal stratification. They may be classified as epilimnation or epilimnia, megalimnation or calimnia, hypolimnation or hypolimnia. So upper surface is a warmer, middle temperature fluctuations are occur or the temperature gradually should be down. Hypolimnia, there is no penetrate the temperature, so generally is occur cold water. Next one I am going to commonly call as Vegetation Zone of Temperature They say Vegetation Zone of Temperature so which things should be highly to here they will be occupied is commonly called as latitude 
and altitude. So latitude and altitude, those two, it's a gradually affect vegetation. So here, variations of latitude and altitude, or the variation they will be given the latitude and altitude. That's our affect temperature as well as vegetations in the surface of area. So once again, I am indicating to you variations of latitude and altitude if it is occur. That's our affect temperature and as well as vegetation in the surface of area. Yes. Before that, going the nature. What do you mean commonly called as latitude? Latitude is nothing but it is a zoom or it is a slope. It is ranges from 0 degree Celsius that is commonly called as equator to 90 degree different poles. That is commonly called as latitude. What do you mean commonly called as it's altitude? Altitude is nothing but it's a high range of place. That's are usually situated to above sea level. Now can I discuss about what are the latitudinal vegetation or what are the altitudinal vegetation? First of all, latitude vegetation. Zone of vegetation. So, latitudinal zone of vegetation can be classified as you know that what is the latitude? It is or occur from 0 degree Celsius of equator. This is a commonly called as polar region. So, what are the kinds of plants they may be occur? First of all, it is snow. Second thing is a tundra. Third thing, coniferous forest. Fourth one, deciduous forest. Fifth one, grassland or desert. Sixth one, tropical a rainforest. So that is commonly called as latitudinal zones of vegetation, namely snow, tundra, coniferous forest, deciduous forest, grassland, or it is a tropical rainforest. That's all commonly called as latitudinal zones of vegetation. Can I go to this next one? Is commonly called as altitude. Are altitudinal zones of vegetation the altitudinal zones of vegetation can be classified as so here that is ranges from 1300 meter to 1800 meter. Seventh thing, 3000 meter to 4000 meter. 6500 meter to 7500 meter.
10,000 meter to 2,000 meter. Next one, 30,000 meter to 14,500 meter. This is that slope that must be occur in a mountain. So, what are the kinds of range of organisms that must be existing in altitudinal vegetation? So, first one is commonly called as it is a ice. So, second one is commonly called as it is a tone draw. Third one is commonly called as coniferous forest. Next one thing, deciduous forest. Next one is commonly called as grassland or desert. The last one is commonly called as tropical rainforest. So these are things, the altitude zones of vegetation that must be occur. What is the ranges of matter from the kinds of things that happen? So, based on the nature, they can be classified as timber line. Or also known as timeline. So, what is called timber line or timeline? That to be say, according to different kinds of meter, they can be situated. So, what is timber line or timeline? It is commonly called as Imaginary line, you have to be kept in mountain or high range of surface. So there are different kinds of slope is there. In this slope, which range that trees are generally they may be grow. So the trees are generally grow in 3000 to 4000. Here only trees are generally possible to grow that to say commonly called as timber line or also called timber. The last one is commonly called as effect of temperature. The temperature it is infused or it is our affect many physiological process. What are the physiological process that are influencing or affect can be understood to be here. The first one, high temperature that are affect enzymatics in the cells. What is it? So high temperature that are affect enzymatic synthesis. So enzymes, it is a very essential compound for synthesis of food material. So the high temperature, it is a disturb or decrease the production of enzymatic synthesis means. So jealous. so generally affect the production of biochemical activities. So what you say like this to be here, high temperature, it is affect enzymatic synthesis of Many biological processes or many biological activities in the plants. So many biological activities that are disturbed due to less secretions of enzyme because of high temperature would disturb the enzymatic synthesis. That is the first effect of temperature. Second thing. So temperature, it is responsible for stimulate seed germination. And promotes growth of Links. So it's must. Third thing, low temperature 
can affect as well as low temperature can spread of diseases in plants so if it is low temperature that mean it's uh, generally possible for spread of disease in plants if it is high temperature means no one microorganism cannot be produce any kinds of disease that we say low temperature it is susceptible for spread of disease in plants the fourth one varying temperature what do you mean varying temperature temperature may be high temperature it may be low temperature it may be moderate that's a call varying temperature and moisture what is it varying temperature and moisture that's two things to determine distributions of distributions of plants those four is commonly called as effects of transpiration first of all reduction in enzymes in biological activities of the plants second thing stimulates seed germination and promote growth of seedlings third thing below temperature it can be responsible for spread of disease in plant fourth one varying temperature is available along with moisture that things are those capability to determine that distribution of plants so nowadays discussing the ecological principles of ecology which chapter can be classified as common to us ecological factor up to effects of temperature temperature thank you